not wanting to get the COVID vaccine. I'm breaking down what you need to know. Hey friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor in Austin, Texas. And I have been talking a lot about the COVID vaccine. And I know so many of us are sick of COVID and we're sick of talking about the vaccine. But today this video is for anybody who's questioning getting the vaccine, who wants more information, who doesn't want to do something that's going to hurt them and has been hearing a lot of different things out there. This video is also, if you want to share it with friends who've not gotten the vaccine, educate yourself or understand some of the top things you can say that are based in fact and not fear. Please subscribe and share. That's how we spread our message of fertility education because you deserve to know what goes on with your body. I'm a fertility doctor. I do not want you to do anything that would ever, ever hurt your chances of getting pregnant in the future. That is my life's mission. I work so hard. I have started a practice. I do everything on my social channels to educate people so they have higher chances of getting pregnant and they're making better decisions. The last thing I would do would sit here and talk about something that would hurt your fertility. And in fact, I restrict behaviors all the time. I have no problem telling my patients, eat less meat, stop processed food, you can't smoke pot and all of the things. And so yet I am sitting here and telling my patients that I am recommending and encouraging the COVID vaccine, whether they are pregnant, undergoing fertility treatments, or trying to conceive. And so I think you need to understand why. The other thing is I appreciate that there is some resistance or fear because of the early rumors. If somebody's telling you that a choice you make may impact your ability to get pregnant in the future, you should stop, pause, and think about it that is good and healthy. We don't want to just blindly follow something without thinking through it. That's part of what science is. It's thinking about something, understanding the hypothesis, evaluating the data and making conclusions. You know, in the past, society just trusted scientists and doctors to do this for them. But the current world, people are allowed to have equally loud voices on social media platforms. And this has led to the spread of misinformation and confusion. And so we're gonna to try to stop some of the confusion and go through these top factors, reasons why people aren't getting vaccinated and what you need to know about them. Number one, the vaccine was developed too fast. I understand this reason because mRNA vaccine technology is new and so do you really wanna sign up for something new? The important thing to realize is that the technology is not new at all. We have been in the development of studying this and trying to discover a vaccine for other viruses that could be based on mRNA technology because it's really pretty and straightforward. So let's understand what it is. We have over 15 years of experience studying this. An HIV vaccine has been in the works for a really, really long time. And the COVID vaccine was able to be rushed and fast because of a global pandemic, worldwide attention towards getting a vaccine out there. And in science, usually vaccines and diseases that aren't impacting people at very high prevalency rates are not funded well enough to get a lot of good science and the support behind them. So this was really a global effort to get science moving forward. mRNA vaccine technology is where your body is injected with a very small amount of mRNA. mRNA is messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is not, let's go over the knots, changing your DNA, incorporating into your DNA. So when we learned about biology and we learned about cell biology, messenger RNA is providing a coding sequence. So what it is doing is it is telling your body to make proteins. Your DNA is absolutely unaffected by this, but it is something that's saying, hey, I want you ribosomes specifically to make this protein sequence and I have given you the code for it. And what it is doing is translating that mRNA into a protein sequence. So this happens in our body all the time. This process is very normal. DNA gets transcripted into RNA mRNA then is the sequence that can tell the ribosomes to make a protein. DNA can't make proteins. It needs mRNA to talk to the other cells in the body. So DNA is still just normal. You're getting a messenger signal that's like a code. The ribosomes are then able to interpret said code and make proteins. Important to know is mRNA is really degraded really rapidly in the body. The body always degrades it. It's like, hey, why is there mRNA hanging out? going and degrading it. mRNA cannot live long. The reason why antibodies are helpful is that that's your body's immune system. When your body then encounters COVID out in the wild, it's going to be able to mount a proper immune response, 
faster. It's going to be able to get rid of the virus that will be invading your body. And the antibodies are a normal thing. We have antibodies against all types of things in our bodies. This is how our bodies are designed. This is our natural immune system. And so these antibodies are super helpful. And that is what's really beautiful about this process. These antibodies can be passed on. They, the antibodies can go through the placenta or in the breast milk, and that's able to provide protection to a baby. And that's wonderful and beautiful and not harmful. It's an antibody. Just like other types of antibodies can go through the placenta or breast milk as well. And this is why breastfeeding, for example, decreases the risk of ear infections and other illnesses because mom can pass on some of her immunity. So number one, it was developed too fast. No, it wasn't. Number two, I don't want my DNA modified. Not how mRNA work. Number three, it's still experimental. Well, kind of. So it was originally approved under an emergency use authorization, which is what has to happen when you're in times of emergency use. You probably also use lots of experimental things every single day because vitamins aren't FDA approved. Neither is the white claw that you drink or a lot of the food that you eat. But that reason could make you have pause if you're concerned that it wasn't actually approved or it's too experimental. The FDA has approved it. The CDC has recommended the vaccine. All organizations that take care of people in their reproductive years, over 22 of them, have recommended the vaccine for people who are wanting to become pregnant, trying to get pregnant, undergoing fertility treatments, or actively pregnant. 22 plus organizations in agreement, plus the CDC, and now an FDA approval for the Pfizer vaccine for reproductive age adults to get vaccinated, including times of pregnancy. Reason number four, I don't believe that the vaccine is safe for me. There's conclusive evidence that getting COVID is an extremely risky state as compared to the vaccine. So getting a vaccine, taking a medication, taking any drug might carry some small risk. The risk of all of these things happening from the virus are magnitudes higher. And generally when we look at these, we don't want to keep doing a vaccine that is not safe, but the risk of getting COVID is significantly higher than the risk of any of these complications from the vaccine. And we have millions and billions, almost 200 million people in the United States have received at least one vaccine. Over 2 billion people worldwide have been vaccinated. And so to say that we don't have data that the vaccine is safe is a false statement. Safe does not mean zero side effects. Safe means that in almost everybody's side effects are so exceedingly rare that it is worth getting the vaccine. Same thing for safety from antibiotic profiles and other medications and things that we do. These risks are the same risk we see with other vaccines. And so truly the group that should not be getting a vaccine is if you've had a prior severe complication, an allergic reaction, an anaphylaxis from a different type of vaccine in the past. Reason number five, there's no long-term data on the vaccine. I hear this one every single day. And let's just think about it. We have lots of long-term data on lots of different vaccines and vaccines can cause some short-term problems, which we just mentioned, but there's not a hypothesis or a basis of evidence that getting a vaccine can cause long-term problems because it's a short-term thing. Your body makes antibodies and then you have the antibodies. They circulate in your body. So thinking that you're going to get a vaccine and then develop some complication 20 years later, really there's no basis for that. The other thing I always say here is that in science all the time, and especially in reproductive medicine, we make decisions with the data that we have. We make the best decisions with the data we have. And so things like IVF or in vitro fertilization, we did not wait 20 years to see if there were long-term outcomes before we rolled it out to the general public. The benefit life was significant enough to make it worth any risk, especially when there was no theoretical risk or hypothetical or proven risk in any preliminary study. And so the same thing is going for the vaccine now. There's no reason why it should have a long-term side effect. There's no data that there should be long-term side effects. The vaccine was started to be given in July of 2020, so we have over a year, and people aren't developing some weird thing all this time later. And as far as reproductive consequences, absolutely no, there's no reason for it to be based in. And so the data that we have shows safety, efficacy, and it does not show that there's going to be harm. So reason number five why people are not getting the vaccine is that there's no long-term data is not a reason that stands up when we look at the science. Also, if we're talking about long-term side effects, people vaccinated a year ago are not having any any weird nuance of symptoms, but people who had COVID a year ago are. Long COVID is a real thing. Long COVID can cause fatigue, confusion, memory problems, depression, breathing problems, shortness of breath, cough, hair loss, heart problems, lung problems. Long COVID is a real thing. We don't know how this will progress over time. And so if we're going to use the argument that we're afraid of long-term risk, we should be afraid of the long-term risk of COVID 
over a long-term risk of the vaccine, which we've not seen any of. Reason number six, I heard the vaccine will hurt my fertility and I want to have kids. So I'm not going to get the vaccine because I want kids. This one resonates with me because of what I do for a living and because I had infertility myself. And I have videos upon videos talking about the vaccine and infertility. This all started from misinformation saying that the vaccine caused antibodies against syncytion or a placental protein. Therefore, it would cause failed implantation, pregnancy loss, stillbirth, miscarriage, and it has not proven true. There's even no basis. It's not a direct amino acid sequence. There's overlap in amino acid sequence throughout our entire bodies all the time. But this was really just a made up lie for somebody who it appears was disgruntled against Pfizer. This lie has caused lots of lots of harm. It has prevented people from getting the vaccine and is now leading to death of pregnant women. So I want you to take this really to heart. There's no evidence. There's not even a hypothesis for why the vaccine would impact your fertility. When we start thinking about the body, I want you to understand that we are very careful looking at some of these outcomes. And even though we might think it takes a really long time in the natural population, we look at reproductive studies all the time on a cycle to cycle basis or in IVF outcomes. And we have data looking at the COVID vaccine showing that there's no difference in implantation after IVF cycles. There's no change in IVF cycles. So if you got the vaccine and then you went through a cycle, it did not take more medication. Your ovaries did not work worse. You did not have lower implantation rates. You didn't have worse quality embryos. You were not more likely to have a miscarriage. Those things have not held up. And if this rumor was true, we would have seen those things being the case. We also have lots of data looking at cohort studies of pregnant people or people who got the vaccine right before or in very early pregnancy, and there is no higher association with miscarriage and stillbirth. Great study published in the New England Journal of Medicine looking at thousands of patients. This is important, you guys, because we do not want to make a choice based out of fear. The Delta variant of COVID is very different. It is more infectious and we are seeing pregnant people die. And I'm not saying that to be dramatic, but I'm being very, very honest. This is now death is a preventable outcome. Severe COVID with intubation, fetal death, those things are preventable. We have study after study showing that a COVID infection in a pregnant person's higher risks of ICU admission, intubation, ECMO, death, preterm birth, C-section, and fetal death if you get a COVID infection versus somebody who does not get a COVID infection when you're pregnant. And so preventing severe COVID is really essential for mom and for baby. We see stories all over the news of young, healthy, pregnant with no comorbidities not surviving COVID. And so we're not trying to recommend anything just because. We are trying to keep you alive. The data supports Getting the vaccine is the number one thing you can do to keep yourself safe. If you do not get the vaccine, you are putting yourself and your baby at risk. That is what all of your OBGYNs and your fertility doctors across the world want you to know. We are invested in your future family. You must be alive to have a future family. And I mean that really clearly. So number six, the I want kids in the future. I want you to have kids in the future too. That's not a reason not to get the vaccine. Actually, survival is the number one thing you need to be able to have kids in the future. And you should feel confident in the fact that we've actually looked at these reproductive outcome because of some of these rumors. And we have confirmed what we suspected, no change at all. From an observational standpoint, I've had tons of patients getting pregnant after getting the COVID vaccine. So almost all of my patients are vaccinated. We've gone through IVF cycles, embryo transfers, and I'm seeing higher pregnancy rates than ever during this time period, not lower. So even for my own patients observing this, I'm not seeing any change. And I swear, your reproductive endocrinologists across the country, we look at our pregnancy rates and our embryo transfer outcomes like crazy. Like we obsess over them. When anything is off, we go to the lab. Is something new? Is something different? What is going on? This was lower. We are always looking at how we can have the highest odds of pregnancy. And if the vaccine was causing a lower chance of pregnancy, we would know. You would know. We wouldn't have you get it. Okay, and number seven, the vaccine's not studied in pregnant people. Well, yes and no. One, it is hard to do studies in pregnant people just across the board. That is a rate limiting step. But two, we have over 150,000 pregnant people who have gotten the vaccine. We have over 5,000 pregnant people enrolled in a study, cohort study, a really good study, watching to see what the outcomes are. And we have data showing that there is no increase in adverse reproductive outcomes. The people who are quoting the New England Journal saying that there is a 86% chance higher chance of miscarriage do not understand the data. They're not interpreting the statistics right. I have an entire video on that that you can go watch about the COVID vaccine and pregnancy and talking about that study. So 
the chance of miscarriage was lower than the standard chance just from being a person walking on earth. The chance of a stillbirth was lower than it was naturally. So we are not seeing higher rates of stillbirth or miscarriage after vaccination. In fact, we are seeing lower slash the same chance that you would just have being a person because stillbirth and miscarriage do happen. And so we don't compare things to zero. We compare them to the rate of them happening. Friends, if you yourself or your best friend or somebody you care about has chosen not to get the vaccine, I understand. I have friends. I know some people who have not gotten vaccinated. It's hard and it's scary as somebody who feels like they understand all this data to not be able to get through to somebody with science. And so I just want to give you some tools and some guidance so that you can try to help people. If you're not going to get the vaccine, and specifically if you're pregnant, I'm really asking you to please act like it's April of 2020. Stay in your house. Don't go to public. Please don't ever be indoors. Wear a mask everywhere. We don't want you to die. I don't want you to die. I don't blame you. I do not think care should be withheld from people who are choosing not to get the vaccine, but I think you deserve education. I'm not angry with you for not getting the vaccine. I'm angry at the people who told the lies that maybe made you have enough fear that you just cannot feel comfortable. I understand what a hard decision this is for some people, but I also understand that we have nothing to gain by recommending this. It burns me out every time I talk about the vaccine, the hate, the dark horse people who come out of everywhere and want to tell me I'm the worst person on earth and that I'm killing people, the hate emails and DMs and comments, how I have to manage every social media site. Guys, it almost feels not worth it. But for the people who message and say, hey, that video made a difference to me, that post made a difference, I felt more confident in my decision, you helped me make the choice to get the vaccine and now I feel safe. Now my baby feels safe. I was able to share that with somebody. That's what I'm holding on to in these moments. And so trust me, there's no ulterior motive here. I purely want you to have the information you need to make the best choice for you. I want you to be able to educate and empower your friends. And I really want us to all get through this pandemic together. And I promise I do not want your pregnancy or your future fertility harmed in any way possible. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate if you would subscribe, if you enjoyed the information, you can always follow along on the As A Woman podcast or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks friends.